So far in our discussion of object-oriented programming, we've talked about two things as they relate to an object. One is an object's data or its information. What are the things an object remembers? Well, what information does it hold? And the second thing is an object's behaviors. So what does an object actually do? You can think of those alternatively as what are the nouns that we're working with? What are the things, the information? And uh, for methods, what are the verbs that we're working with? You know, what are the things that an object can actually do? So let's talk a little bit about using a particular object's methods. You know, we've danced around exactly what they are so far, but uh, I'm guessing you have a sort of intuitive idea of this, right? We've seen at least one method that we've implemented, and that, that, that method is the main method. And we've done this in a couple different programs, but we've also called methods that we don't really know how they're implemented. Like we've used a scanner object's next double method, and we've used the print line method uh, from a system.out object. But it would be helpful if we had a better mental model of what a method exactly is. And it's, it's really analogous to a mathematical function. It's something that takes some inputs, does some stuff, and maybe returns an output. Okay, so in this case, uh, we call the inputs here parameters, and that's what we call them in the actual definition of the method. Or when we're calling a method, we call them arguments. So those are the things that go into this meat grinder. Then the meat grinder does stuff, and we call that the implementation. So what calculations it does, what other methods it calls, maybe it prints to the screen, maybe it displays something to the screen. And last, methods can return a single value or no values. Right? So what, what the actual answer that gets spit out is. So as an example, this print line method, okay, well, it takes input, right, the parameters, the thing that we pass in, that's what we want to be printed. It does stuff, it prints that thing to the terminal, and then it doesn't actually have a return value. Okay, there's nothing that actually gets spit out at the end. Next double, well, next double doesn't take any inputs when we call it. The next double method is a little bit different. It doesn't take any inputs when we run it. You can see that when we actually call the method, nothing goes in the parentheses right here. That's where we would normally put the arguments. Okay, but once we pass that stuff through the meat grinder, it does actually do stuff prompts the user for them to type something, and it waits until they type it in, and, and then it outputs what the user actually did type in, what the double value that they typed in was. Uh, normally, then we can take that return value and store it in a variable. You know, key idea here, right? A particular class implements a particular method. And really what that means is, for a particular class, we can have a definition of a method. So an example of this is in the scanner class, we have a method called next double. Whoever was writing the scanner class over at Oracle or wherever wrote a definition of what the next double method does and how it does it. Then what we do is we create an instance of a class or an object. So when I instantiate a scanner object, I have one particular scanner. And then I can call a method from that particular instance of the scanner class. Sometimes methods take parameters, not always though. So example here, just like we saw before, uh, the next double method takes no parameters. System.out.print line here takes one parameter, 50.5. So when we call a method like these, uh, the number and the type of parameters that we pass in, it matters. It has to match the definition of the method exactly. So let's take an example. Uh, we'll see shortly a method called uh, the, the square root function. It's in the math class. Okay, so here, the square root function has to take a single parameter of type double. So let's see, if I have a double d, it's 24.6. Well, if I just call square root of d, perfect, makes sense. Uh, d is a double, we're taking the square root. If I then go ahead and I say square root of 2.0 times d, still works fine. That expression as a whole, 2.0 times d, that's going to evaluate to a double. If I do square root of 4, well, that's okay too, because uh, integers can stand in for doubles. Doubles are a more inclusive class. Here, though, we start to have problems. If I say square root of nothing, well, that's an error. The, the square root method actually needs one parameter at least. Here, I'm trying to take the square root of two numbers. Well, that's a problem too. We need exactly one parameter. And here, we're taking one parameter, but it's the wrong type, so that's unacceptable. Sometimes methods actually return values too, not always. So print line does not return a value. Now that might be confusing at first because you might think, well, when I print something to the screen, that's the output. But printing something to the screen is different from actually returning one value, from having a one return value. So for print line, Though we do stuff, though we print something to the screen, uh, there's actually no value returned from it. So we say that its return type is void. Next double, though, in the scanner class, does return a value. Okay, and that value is entered by the user via the keyboard. So the value that gets returned is a double. So we want to use a method. Three things we got to know. First of all, we got to know what its return type is. 
right? So the, that we can use it appropriately. Second thing we got to know is what's the method called? Because we got to call it with the same name that it's defined with. And third, we got to know what kind of parameters it actually wants. Okay, and here, the order of the parameters, the number of the parameters, the types of the parameters all matter. So you can see if, uh, if it doesn't want anything, fine, no parameters. If it wants a string, then we got to give it a string. If it wants two ints, we got to give it that. If it wants a double, then an int, then another double, right? That order matters. You can't just give it a double, double int or an int, double, double. It's got to be the exact order that it's defined in. Those three things together are what we call a method's signature. So here are a couple of examples, just those two same methods we were looking at before. Look, the next double method takes no parameters. It's called next double, and it has a return type of double. For the print line method, this is actually one particular definition of the print line method uh, in the print stream class. We can talk more about that later. Uh, but this particular definition of the print line method takes a single double input. Okay, and it writes the value of whatever n is to the print stream. And here we can see the return type is void. Nothing actually gets returned. We do write something to the print stream. We do write something out, but there's no return value. Next thing we want to talk about real quick is naming things. We're going to be naming things all the time. Generally, Java is pretty tolerant of uh, how things should be named, but there are some pretty strong style conventions that it's good to be mindful of. So uh, rules are all of these characters are legitimate, right? Capital letters, lowercase letters, dollar sign, digits, uh, but names in Java are case sensitive. So these two Celsius and uppercase Celsius are different. The conventions, the, the generally agreed upon practices for how we name things, right? Um, we name variables in lowercase. We don't start variables in, we don't start variables with numbers, and we don't use reserved words in names. Uh, we'll see more reserved words in a second. Uh, we start classes and program names with uppercase letters, hello world, and convert. Constants are the only things in all capital letters. So these are final variables, right? Pi, feet per mile, Avogadro. And everything, except for those constants, is in camel case, which means we start every word, uh, even in the middle of a single variable name, with an uppercase letter. Now, as you're naming variables, you want to make sure that you choose names that are truly descriptive. So radius rather than r, taxable income rather than ti. And you want to make sure that it's very clear to you in a year or to someone else reading your code what a particular variable means. Other key rule, hinted at this a couple of slides ago, there are some words that are specifically set aside in Java, um, and these are called reserved words. They can't be used in variable names or in anything else. So examples of these, import, double, int, class, return. You can't name a variable double. You can't name a variable int. You can use int in a variable name, so my double or my int, but you can't just name it int by itself. A list of reserved words is here. You don't need to memorize these. You'll get the hang of them as you run through and actually use them from time to time. Now, last thing for today, in the real world, you don't actually write all your code from scratch. You're gonna use stuff that other people have written. And so we wanna know how we can import classes or code that other people have written so that we can use them. We've already done this a little bit. You've seen that we have to import the scanner class, uh, but essentially uh, when we have a bunch of classes that are related to each other and are useful in some way, we can put them in a package together and import that package into new code that we're writing. So uh, importing is simple. You wanna, you just use the import keyword then the package name, if there's a subsection that you're using, you can import that, and then whatever the class name is. Uh, you can have any number of subsections, uh, So, but in, in this particular situation, if I have a package name and a subsection and I want to import everything that's inside that subsection, I can use the star, the asterisk, to indicate give me everything in there. We'll see more of this later, so don't worry about it for now. Couple things before you close up shop. Uh, you want to be able to explain a method as a meat grinder or whatever other input, output, image you have in your mind. Make sure you can articulate an answer to the question, are printing and returning a value the same thing? Can you tell me what are the three parts of a method signature that need to match in order to be able to call a method? Uh, you should be able to identify whether a variable name is valid or invalid, whether it has good style or bad style. Uh, you want to know uh, how do we differentiate between the names of programs, classes, and variables, and we want to know what makes a good variable name. Make sure you know uh, what are some reserved words we've used so far. We want to know uh, how we could actually write an import statement, particularly for the scanner class. And finally, uh, can you go through these examples and identify what are valid or invalid or good or bad style names for a variable or for a program? And uh, what's wrong with these particular names as examples? So thank you very much. See you next class.